I'm uh, full-time on the board of the uh, Holland uh, Hospital Group uh, since a number of years, uh, and I've been, I'm a cardiologist by training. Uh, and uh, I have been in this collaboration with AI Sweden and uh, uh, also Sargenska Science Park for uh, a few years now, uh, meeting all these challenges that c- uh, come up when we Uh, when we try to collaborate. This is uh, uh, the use case uh, for today is about um, natural language processing and also enabling uh, uh, the use of the sensitive data in our electronic health records. It's very valuable, it's necessary to use it, but it's also challenging. And it's part of the uh, overall umbrella project called Information Driven Care, where we uh, work along the value chain of knowledge using data and translating it into information, further into insights in order to alter behavior to create better patient value. Uh, And and the the current project, the natural language uh, processing project, uh, is a way of translating data into information. Data in this case, uh, uh, unstructured, unlabeled data. Uh, And to use this, uh, it's super important to uh, collaborate with the best uh, on the market. no, we could not clearly do this by ourselves. Uh, so you need to involve uh, different capabilities and, and knowledge domains in order to um, go forward and proceed and succeed. Uh, and this, that is just the main message of, of, this, of this slide, that uh, we have academy with us, we have uh, life science industry with us, we have science parks and we have hospitals, etc. And this combination is, is crucial in order to be able to go forward. Uh, we do this uh, work uh, in order to uh, combine all these capabilities in what we call uh, our Center for Information Driven Care. And that's uh, a working space, a, a small unit uh, where we create uh, experience in sharing data, using data, etc. And uh, I apologize for the Swedish on this slide, but uh, what I would like to say is that within this team, uh, uh, we have multi uh, competent people, including legal team and, and chief medical staff and, and um, and clinicians and compu- uh, data scientists in order to learn from each other and not uh, and combine knowledge in order to meet obstacles. One obstacle is misunderstanding. So one way to enable actual use of, of, of sensitive data in this uh, case is explaining, explaining again and again to, to legal teams, to uh, data scientists, to uh, the management for all to feel enough trust in the project so that they can stand behind it. Another uh, challenge when you dig into research in the uh, healthcare sector is that it's not used to uh, the data-driven model. Uh, in, in healthcare, we're used to the hypoth- uh, hypothesis-driven uh, research, where you have a research question and then you, you try to answer that. But in, in uh, this data-driven, uh, data-driven analytics, uh, you explore data and you do that I- iteratively. Uh, and that's not usually the way uh, healthcare research has, has worked uh, historically. So this is also a change in culture, uh, research culture. Another change uh, uh, that we in healthcare that we were not used to is the need of processing power. So we actually needed to invest in in more GPUs, or we didn't even have GPUs before. Uh, so, um, and, and explaining to 
management why we need to invest in new hardware uh, also is a challenge that that has to be met and we have overcome that so we have uh, now these uh, capabilities in place one major challenge is certainly the legal part and what we did was to involve the legal team early on from the beginning in order to guide us what to do in order to proceed in a, a, a regulatory compliant way. So this means that we had to write up uh, a DPIA, Data Protection Impact Assessment, uh, according to GDPR. Uh, we also uh, wrote PUB Autol, which is a a secrecy agreement uh, with the stakeholders involved and also on the individual uh, level people who are working on this sensitive data uh, need to agree to uh, all the same prerequisites as the uh, healthcare staff uh, themselves so uh, and this took time this was something that was new to many, uh, uh, specifically people who are not used to working with sensitive data, uh, but it, it's doable. And that is uh, basically the message here that uh, uh, once you write up this playbook, uh, this checklist of what accordances that need to be signed, what uh, hardware that needs to be in place, what uh, who needs to agree with the project uh, scope itself, then it's repeatable. So um, you, uh, you benefit from building a team uh, where the domains of knowledge understand each other because once they do that, the value of that team is, is huge because then the next project will not be as, as um, uh, abstract and, and, uh, and not making sense uh, as the first project. So building this experience and, and writing it up, building the playbook for, for uh, remote access, etc. Uh, is is really a valuable work. We also uh, took a number of of uh, technical measures uh, around the access to the right data for the right people. Uh, so uh, we uh, initialized mobile passes so, and and. VDIs and RDPs, and, and hopefully you're fairly familiar with these uh, acronyms, uh, but these are components uh, enabling us to provide access in a safe and controlled and trackable way. Uh, so, and, and certainly this uh, provides trust. Uh, it, it's in order to provide trust, but also in order to to comply with with regulations. So uh, this is was a very rapid overview of work that uh, took place uh, over several years. Actually, two years. I think it took us two years to to combine the competence of of data science with the actual data. Uh, but we learned a lot from it and now we have the playbook and, and we try to share that playbook uh, in as many uh, circumstances as possible, written and oral, uh, because we hope that, that other uh, teams will not suffer <laughs> the way we did no, uh, in, in terms of frustration. One step forward, two steps back, that's been the uh, tradition until the point where we are now, where we are, we're actually doing the cool stuff. So thank you.